who's also on our committee will be a little late. Um, so the first item on our agenda is um, public comment. Do we have any pu public comment, Ms. Janicki? No, we do not. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is a committee business. And the first item on our committee business is the approval of the October 12th, 2021 minutes. I am. I approve the minutes as written. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank you. So the uh, October 12th, 2021 minutes have been approved as uh, presented. Now that we're moving on to the South King Fire and District uh, information meeting with uh, a, a presentation by a Vic, a Chief Vic Pennington. Go ahead, Chief. Hi, thank you. Uh, um, it's always nice to be here and, and uh, you know, come back and visit again. So uh, I just want to get you up to speed on a few things that are going on around the fire district. You know, um, we've got, uh, I, I spoke before, we, we, we've got a, a new fire boat that, that will be here now. It looks like um, sometime mid to late December. Uh, it's been on a delay due to some of the, uh, some of the supply chain. So we're happy with that. We also, <clears throat> excuse me, have four new fire engines that will be delivered uh, sometime probably mid to late January. So we're excited about that. Uh, station 65, our fire station located over off of 298th and 50th Avenue South. <clears throat> we, um, we're starting the, the remodel on that and the safety upgrades, the seismic upgrades. Um, that project is, was put behind a little over a year due to, to the COVID. And, and now we're in a position where we're able to move forward with that. Um, and that will be the last project that we have relative to our bond funding that uh, the public graciously uh, approved. Um, one of the other things here locally, the COVID test site over at the Aquatic Center, um, the firefighters will be transitioning um, on November 29th. They'll be transitioning away from that. There's a, uh, the, the, the Federal Way site and they'll be going down to the Auburn testing site, the Federal Way site. Uh, will remain in service. However, um, as a as a uh, uh, test site, and it be staffed by the Franciscan Group um, for administering self uh, administering uh, self swabbing, and so that will be happening here at the end of the month. Um, we uh, we're in the process of of hiring ten additional firefighters, so uh, we're we'll be uh, sending those folks to the academy here after the first of the year and should have them on the street by uh, mid next year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, our calls for service in the fire district have, are up. Uh, and this is, seems to be the trend as a whole in the fire service, at least in the south end. Um, we're up right now about 12% over what we were last year. So um, at this time last year, so we're, we're, uh, we're quite a bit higher. Um, it, it, there, that's attributed to probably a lot of different things. So um, Anyway, so we're trending up on, on calls and calls for service. Uh, the, uh, you know, we have a, a piece of property over by station 64. Um, it's uh, 20 acres that uh, our uh, chief of, of uh, special ops has, has walked through there today with the uh, code and the federal way code enforcement, the police officer, and uh, some, some folks from uh, some contractors. We're looking and we're working with the city and appreciate the uh, the cooperation we've had with the city, but we're looking at at ways to uh, to uh, clean that up. It, it's it's been a, a, a place where we've continually had to to ask people to to leave. So we're looking at at that, and we're working with the city for some longer term solutions. So we very much appreciate the cooperation with the uh, the city code enforcement and police department. Um, gosh, and we are. We the the uh, governor's proclamation actually you know that that uh, that went into place October 19th. We we have uh, 12 folks that are either um, that have been there, there's there's uh, five that's retired or, or excuse me, one that retired four that uh, chose to resign. Some others that are on on uh, on a on a protected leave. We've got three that we were able to accommodate. So we've got about a dozen people. Uh, that that are out. So part of the hiring process will be replacing uh, some of those those positions, and then we'll know in in the next few months 
the disposition of, of the rest of our folks. So, um, and, and how that, how that correlates is it, is it correlates essentially to the, that's the staffing that it takes to, to staff one aid car. So what we had to do was look at our, our eight cars and look at the ones that had the least impact to the area, the lowest calls for service. And that was the one out of station 64. So that eight car uh, was put out of service due to staffing. However, engine 65, the one who's the, the, the station that's getting remodeled will be moved into that station during the remodel to help cover uh, to cover their area and some of the areas of 64s. So um, we're, we're looking at, again, our hiring processes and, and making up those differences here shortly. Um, so with that, that's really about it for the fire service. Um, appreciate being here, appreciate the time and appreciate the, the, uh, the cooperation and the working relationship that we have with all of our city partners and especially the city of Federal Way. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Chief. Uh, are there any questions, Council? No, nothing. I do, uh, Chief. A couple of them. Sure. Tell me about your boat. That sounds interesting. Well, um, the boat came over in 2006 with the with the merger with uh, uh, the the Legacy Fire District 26 that had a boat in, in service up there, servicing uh, the marina and servicing the the South Puget Sound area, basically from Vashon Island south to to the Pierce County line, uh, working with the Coast Guard. And, and so that boat went into service in 1985. It's had a couple of retro uh, fits to that. And um, we were able to work with the Department of Commerce to get some funding to for a regional asset. So this boat is a is a, 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 a much larger upgrade. Um, it's it's state of the art. It, and it, again, it will be um, it will be moored at the marina down in Des Moines. The fire station up there is there is a specialty team, so they they cross staff the boat. Um, but we're we're really thankful for the support that we've got from our our uh, state uh, legislative contingents, the cities that that supported this, and and we were able to get money from the Department of Commerce, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars towards this this uh, regional asset, which is by the way the first time. This, the state has ever funded, they consider a boat, a vehicle, first time they've ever funded um, a, a boat like this or any 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 vessel. And uh, so we're really, really thankful there. It, it truly is a, a regional asset and it allows us to, to have greater access to the shore. It allows us the firefighting capability on the old boat was about 400 gallons a minute. Um, this one is at 3000 gallons a minute. So it, it will allow us to actually um, reach residences and on the shoreline, uh, allow us greater access to, to rescues and, and things along the shoreline, as well as folks that are out uh, you know, okay. in the area. So thank okay. you for that question. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. One last question. I think I missed when you said about the problem area. Where was that located where you were uh, having the problems with people on your property? Um, you, the, uh, you, you cut out a partial on that. I think you were asking where that was located. The, the problem yes, on the sir. property. That's our property yeah. on 320th, just just east of I-5. It's it's surrounding the the station where the 9/11 memorial is. Okay. So about three 320th and okay. 35th Avenue South. Okay. Thank you. Thank you You're very, very much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks. Jim, thank you, Chief. Thank you for oh. your update. Okay. Oh, you're Bye now. Uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry, Council uh, President Honda. Council President Honda has a question. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. I saw Councilmember Baruso's hand up too, but I don't see him anymore. But so I'll ask my question, then maybe he'll come back on. Um, so, Chief, thanks for being here. I appreciate you being here and this your service. How often do you have do you, do you use the boat, and how often do you have water rescues in this area? Oh, gosh, I don't have the exact numbers, but we, we use it quite a bit during. You know, it's seasonal. Right? You, you've got. You know winter types of things you've got um you've got water rescues that that during the the good time uh, we use it along along with our rescue swimmers that have rescued a number of folks from puget sound and made rescues um from the 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 redondo boat launch um so i you know, i don't have the numbers off the top of my head but it, it's uh, quite a few times that, that we go out and and uh and provide some sort of service the other uh, oftentimes you'll find a boat that's disabled that's in the shipping lanes um, which creates a, a, a large navigational hazard. In fact, as I was on a call where we took a boat off the front, or at least the people 
um, off the front of a freighter that went through and and hit oh. that boat. So um, so there's there's a, a number of different a variety of calls and and uh, um, you know we get all, all sorts of different ones. We're, we're it takes the Coast Guard uh, quite a bit of time to to get from Seattle up into this area. And um, and it also with a, if they have to do some sort of a search with a helicopter, it's about 45 minutes out of Anacortes. So um, so it it's a, a, a quick quick ac access. And as I'm sure some of you are aware of the the uh, proposed uh, foot passenger ferry that's coming out of the Ruston area into into the Des Moines Marina, that creates another level of of uh, of uh, potential hazard for for us out there as well. So, hence the the regional asset and and, and uh, the ask for funding from the state. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vic. Well, I see that Councilmember Baruso has joined us by audio. Councilmember Baruso, did you have any questions? Oh, hi. Sorry, I don't have the video. I was driving and it got cut out. I, I had to, I, <laughs> thanks, Chair Coachmore. I did have a question <laughs> for Chief Pennington. Yes. I'm getting inside the house, so I'll get my video up here. But anyway, could you, if you have time, could you just kind of touch on a little bit of how some of the uh, police reform bills have might have stymied some of our our, our prior responses at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the police reform bills, as you know, uh, the, the the fire service goes on a variety of different calls, um, uh, and a large number of those are, are mental health type of calls and call, calls for service, and and those calls can go um, really sideways. It can become very dangerous for our crews, and just just you know, in in very short order. We've always enjoyed uh, the extra uh, safety net of having the police department there and and being able to to help. As you know, firefighters they're they're not armed. We're not trained in defensive tactics. Uh, we we do try to do escalation, de-escalation, but. Um, it, a, a lot of that that work is really out of our realm, and, and so we've we've always enjoyed the the, the extra uh, level of, of safety, and uh, and because of some of the bills, we haven't been able to to um, to do that. However, uh, we have worked with our local police departments, and I appreciate um, I, I appreciate the the work that has gone on there, and and we're we feel a little more comfortable now going into some of these incidents. If, if there's a, a situation that seems like it, it, it could escalate based on the, the little bit of information that we have from our dispatch and, and our, on our uh, CAD system and our rigs, um, we'll call for, for the police and, and at least have them uh, stage closer to the scene for us if, if, uh, if we need their assistance, if, if something goes, goes awry. And, and it, it's actually worked out well for us. We've got a very, very great line of communication with our police departments and appreciate their, their help and support. So um, they have affected uh, how we do and it does can delay some of the the, uh, um, the service responses if we have to wait for, for additional um, resources to help us out. Thank you, Chief. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, welcome, Greg. Now we can see you. <laughs> okay. Oh, fun when you're driving, it cuts out. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Chief. Wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. So now we're moving forward with our number item number C on our agenda, which is police gate replacements, City Hall bid acceptance. Mr. Gerwin. Good evening, Chair Coach Mar and Council members. Um, Policy question on this one. We brought it to you before to get permission to bid and all that. But tonight, it's uh, should the city council accept uh, bids from John R. Uh, Lesk Jan? He uh, does business as Tacoma Iron Works uh, for the police uh, gate replacements and authorized uh, staff to enter into a uh, contract with him. And so uh, I believe the question was asked uh, when at the time it bid and I wanted to hold my cards. I didn't share a, a price with you guys, but uh, bids did come in at just shy of $55,000, $54,500 uh, approximately. And so <laughs> that was within uh, what we were expecting, uh, actually a little bit less than that. And so uh, we're excited that we actually got someone to bid on it this time, and, and we're going to move forward uh, replacing these gates because uh, we had a little scare today on the north gate, the one that is working, and uh, it's creeping and making lots of noises, and so we're, we're real anxious to enter into this contract. 
And so with that said, I would uh, entertain any questions if there were any. Thank you. Council, do we have any questions? <laughs> I see the bid is like 50 cents less than the 55. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get any closer. No, no, we we, we we're that one close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no questions, huh? Uh, do I hear a motion? Sure. Thank you. I move to forward the bid acceptance and authorization to execute the contract for the police gate replacement at City Hall to the December 7th, 2020, 2021 consent agenda for approval. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Gerwin. Now hey, we're hey. going on. Mm -hmm. I got one more with you. <laughs> Uh, do you want to wait because uh, our next item on our agenda is, uh, oh, you're it. You just yeah, uh, yeah. go ahead, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is kind of a new one for you. And uh, some of the work had been done uh, under a prior administration, Steve Eicher. And I am going to share my screen with you real quickly just to give okay. you a little more context. And so uh, can you see my screen now with a map? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can. And so the policy question on this uh, agenda item is, should the city council grant an easement to Puget, Puget Sound Energy to power Lake Haven's new pump station 33B on city uh, parks department managed property? And so here's an overlay. I didn't do a real good job of cutting the map, but to the north where it says High Lobos Wetlands, uh, that's 356th Street. And so you'll see uh, spot one and spot two. This is what we consider spring in yellow is what we consider Spring Valley open space. And so I'm gonna show you two pictures. Uh, picture one is the old or the existing wellhead station and was approved and PSC has easements that run down uh, kind of that driveway portion to this. And so then picture two is actual construction of the new wellhead which is right off of, I believe it's 359th uh, is the street number there. And so that's where they're building it. So essentially, uh, I'm gonna go back to the top. Can you see my cursor or no? Yes, I can. Yes, we can. Okay, so the, the number two is where the existing one uh, is. Uh, currently the PSE easement runs all the way down this line and then cuts 90 degrees over to site one. And so, uh, the current one will be in this corner and the new PSE easement will be right kind of there in the middle adjacent uh, right next to kind of that well station. Um, part of this is uh, we have to grant the easement so that they can start building on it now. But as they get the uh, new well constructed and operational, they will be decommissioning that old well head. And so we're essentially giving them a easement here and then we are going to gain back the the like l-shaped easement that goes down farther into the property uh once all that's constructed and, and power has been switched over and so um with that being said that's kind of the easement we're granting gives you a little more visual context as to where in the city and how it affects the property um the property has been encumbered with these uh since since we've owned it and so uh, yeah that's the easement that we're looking to grant uh, staff is supportive okay. and so thank you mr gerwin council are there any questions yeah i do have a question go, go ahead council member seba dawson sure one question is um do you know when the project is going to be um completed uh, they're they're hoping to transition over that well site this summer but uh uh, Faye Tang, who used to be a city employee, and Ken Miller, also a former city employee, are the two kind of spearheading this project. And with COVID and the supply chain issues, that that's the their goal. They're already three months behind. They were supposed to be, uh, you know, switched over before, but COVID has really wreaked havoc. So perfect case scenario this summer, but uh, my hunch is it's probably going to get delayed a little bit more and and probably push into the fall a little bit. But you know. Only time will tell, and hopefully those supply chains open and they can get the stuff they need so it doesn't hold up that project. Oh, great. And does it impact the well in any way? Uh, well, no, it's it's actually better, you know, newer technology, more efficient, all of that sort of thing. So Great. Uh, any other questions? So, uh, Jason, the, this is a power uh, pump station for water, correct? Not for sewer? Well, well so that, that's what's really kind of confusing about this is it's, Lake Haven's project, 
but the easement that we're granting is through PSZ because they are coming to provide power to them. And so um, now we've got a different easement with Lake Haven and them building that actual well head uh, on, on our property. But like I say, that was executed and agreed to prior to, to me becoming the deputy director. And so I'm just kind of carrying uh, the project forward. And so, so like I say, that's the weird part. It's a PSE easement for power. The power is for Lake Haven's wellhead station, but we would we grant the the easement to PSC because it's it's them that are doing the impact to okay. city managed property. Okay, okay, okay. I I just <laughs> um, have had run-ins in the past with power regarding um, sewage, and let me tell you that's pretty interesting <laughs> scenario. Okay, yeah, why don't you get like that sewage? Where sewer. it's supposed to go? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, um, believe me, I'm, I used to ask for hazardous pay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, any other questions, Council? I see none. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion, Chair Coachmore. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I boot the Ford Pro's PSC electrical easement <laughs> to December 7, 2021, consent agenda for approval. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to move this easement to the December 7th uh, consent agenda for approval. All in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you very much, support. Mr. Gerwin. Yep. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now we're moving on to the jail services contract amendment, the score jail. Officer Neal. Good evening. Chair, Coach Moran, committee members. So my first uh, agenda bill has to do with an amendment to the, our SCORE jail agreement. So we entered into an agreement with SCORE jail in 2021 this year for three beds uh, as a contract service. And what we are asking is uh, the amendment is to amend that to seven beds, uh, paid beds, guaranteed beds, if you will. Uh, the, one of the reasons for this is one of, we have many contracts with jails, as you know, uh, the contract with Puyallup Jail is no longer in service. We no longer have guaranteed beds there. We still can utilize it if we need to, but it would be at the regular rate and we just don't have guaranteed space. So what we're asking is to amend this uh, contract to seven instead of three. Thank you. Councilor, do we have any questions? Yes, I do. Go ahead, please. So did we cancel our contract and why, or is it a different reason why we don't no, no longer have an agreement with um, Puyallup? Yeah, we, we have an agreement, but what we did is we canceled the guaranteed bed there because we really did not use it. So uh, an explanation for that is jails are uh, kind of funny and who they want to accept and who they don't. And then with COVID on, uh, Puyallup Jail really wasn't a jail that we were utilizing at all. And so we only had a, a, a bed there and what we wanted to use it for was DUI. And, uh, but we use Kent Jail for that. So that, those are really the main reasons that we canceled our guaranteed contract with Puyallup. So if there's a need for a bed, um, and if there's one available, what is our cost? At, at the Puyallup Jail? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have that uh, in this, oh. this uh, here. Yeah, that, that has been terminated. So we can't- uh, but, our, but our just our normal contract, if, if you need that, I'll just have to get that and I can send it to you. No, I'm just curious to yeah. see if it's different from a, a contractual agreement versus on uh, um as needed yeah it will be it'll be more as needed than than a guaranteed bed okay sure. yes thank you so much to president honda thank you thanks chief neil uh are we still using yakima well yakima uh, that was our long-term jail. We are not using Yakima at this time for COVID reasons. They are shut down to us. We still have a contract with them and we would, I'm sure we will bring it back up as soon as COVID uh, relaxes. Um, 
has COVID relaxed at all uh, in the last few months? No. Uh, no, not at all? No. Do, when do you expect to see that happen? Hopefully tomorrow. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I have, I would have no idea. I think that would be a good million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's gonna yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. So, Council, do I hear a mo motion for the is there, amendment? Is there another okay. hand? I, I'm sorry. I thought I saw somebody. No. No. Okay. Um, I move to forward the proposed score contract amendment to the December 7, 2021 Council Consent Agenda for approval. Second. All right, thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded to move the amendment to the December 7 Consent Agenda. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much and thank you, Council President Honda for reminding me that Chief Neal is Chief Neal. So we are now on to, um, again, Chief Neal, purchase of electric motorcycles. So the policy question here is, should the City of Federal Way uh, Police Department purchase two electric motorcycles now with an option to purchase two more after six month uh, evaluation on the first two? So the, the purpose of this, obviously there's all the advantages of having moving to electric, which is something that we want to do. Uh, these particular motorcycles can travel throughout our city and especially on our trails and different places where we want to go and combat things like uh, uh, you know drug deals and things like that but it'll, it will allow our officers to transport themselves around the city more readily and also be as green as possible. Uh, we did research this uh, the the bikes themselves are $24,019 and 30 cents a piece. Uh, and we are asking to purchase two of those. Uh, the funding source for this is going to be our state seizure money because it directly impacts drugs. And, and that, as you know, that money can only be used for the furtherance of drug crimes. Thank you. Council, any questions? Council President Honda. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Uh, Excuse me, Council President. Let's let uh, Council Member Rissa go first. Okay. Of course. Just, just, just a quick Thank question, you. Chief Neal. Um, what's the size of these things? I'm just kind of interested. They're, they're, uh, I, I don't know exactly what uh, what packet that you have there. There's some pictures of these. They, they're they about the size of a dirt bike. They're, they're pretty much uh, a dual sport them. type. Yeah, dirt bike. So they're... Uh, if, if you will, for the kind of bike they are, they're a full-size bike. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, Just look a little, little smaller than the regular traffic ones. Yeah, <laughs> a, little bit. A, a little, a little. Yeah, they're not a, they're not like a full-size <laughs> bike. But then again, that's what makes them so great for going down our trails and different little side streets and alleys and such in in our city. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Chief. So these have to be charged because they're electric. Do we have charging stations at City I, Hall? All, all of that will come with it. And, and it, it isn't necessarily something where we have to, let, let's say, construct this whole uh, charging station as much as just get the charging uh, mechanisms in order to plug in. And they would be charged out where you see the rest of our motorcycles in our sally port outside the, the building. So would these be used on the on the streets too, or just the trails? No, they'll be on the streets too. You can actually read them, uh, ride them on the street. Uh, it, it's just that they're really the 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 real purpose for them is to be able to uh, get places quickly. Where instead of let, let's say, uh, as you know, we have some of our bicycles are electric, and that was such an improvement over the pedal bicycles, and uh, so with these. Uh, rather than our big uh, bikes that we use for traffic enforcement, these are more easily maneuverable and quiet and, of course, green, as I say. So they'll go on the BPA trail? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. They, they'll, they'll I'm go, excited about that. They'll go pretty much anywhere a dirt bike will go. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, they'll, huh. they'll go a lot of places. Awesome. Okay. 
<laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, I may, thank you. That makes me feel safer. I walk on the BBA trail a lot and it makes me feel a lot safer. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Uh, seeing none, Council, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. Check which one. Go ahead, please. I move to forward the police department's proposal to purchase electric motorcycles to the December 7th, 2021 consent agenda for approval. Second. Is there in there? It's been moved and seconded to move this to the December 7th uh, consent agenda. All in favor, please signify by saying oh, aye. I have I have one more question. Sure. Go ahead. Um, is it an intent to have all of our motorcycle fleet go electric? No, no, these will not take the place of our traffic enforcement motorcycles. They're, they're much uh, larger, much more uh, power. You can carry more equipment on them and so on. So it will not replace our normal, if you will, uh, full-size motorcycles. Okay, thank but, you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks. Hey, I, I have a question. Are they Honda? No, no, they're not <laughs> Honda. <but. laughs> okay, how <laughs> oh, darn. Okay. Yeah, you don't get the you don't get the royalties off of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, yeah. it's been moved and seconded, uh, uh, and we and we um, we voted. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, I uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Thank you. Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chief Neal. And uh, you have two more coming up. You've got the agreement. The next one is the agreement between the Washington Traffic Safety Commission and the Federal Way Police Department to provide grant funding for traffic enforcement. So the policy question is, should the city uh, accept $14,900 uh, from the, the Washington Traffic Safety Commission for DUI, motorcycle and distracted driving enforcement? This is something that we uh, receive every year. And obviously what this is, it gives us more opportunity uh, through this grant funding to provide off duty, if you will, our, our traffic and our patrol can uh, sign up for the different DUI enforcements that we have uh, certain times of the year, maybe certain places. And it, it just gives us more opportunity to get out there and make the streets safe in our community. Okay, council, any questions? Uh, seeing no hands, do I hear a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. I move to approve the proposed agreement, accept grant funding, and authorize Chief Andy Wong. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll start all over. I move to forward the proposed agreement and grant fund acceptance to the no uh, December 7, 2021 consent agenda for approval. Thank you. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to move this to the December 7th consent agenda for approval. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. And Chief Neal, one last uh, item, amendment to the Pierce Transit Extra Duty Police Services Agreement. So as you know, we have an agreement with uh, Pierce Transit for extra duty in and around certain areas of the city, certainly around the transit center. And what this is, is this is uh, the, the policy question is, should the city uh, amend the agreement with Pierce Transit for extra duty police services? There was an increase uh, in the amount that they are going to reimburse us for. And it, it, the, the hours and uh, uh, work responsibilities and those things are not going to change, but you can see that the, the uh, uh, the overtime rate for this uh, current 2021 overtime rate is 76.63 and will be increased as needed by the same percentage of pay increase as Federal Way Police Guild bargaining agreement with the city. So uh, there will be, it depends on the agreement with the uh, officers on how much more that will be, but this is a continuing agreement. What we want to do obviously is continue to provide extra duty enforcement at these critical uh, places in the within the city. Councilor, are there any questions? Y wow. Yeah, I do. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, Council Member Seth Dawson. Yes, sure. Um, so transit, just so I, I can understand, um, peer transit uses the same stops and the same um, the the um, the transit center, right? They all yes. share That's with correct. Metro. 
and sound transit. So how do you, is it just like an agreed upon? Yeah, how, how, how do you decide what goes to Pierce Transit versus Metro versus Sound Transit? So depending on the type of calls that come in that the officers may deal with at these facilities, if it's a bus, then they know who to contact. Let's say the incident happened on the bus, but it ends up at our transit center. Then they know who to contact. That particular entity can then send a detective or an officer front to handle the criminal part if it happened there. If it happens at our actual transit center or uh, uh, in our city, in our facility, then we take that uh, case, if you will, that uh, a criminal case. So we just, the officers know, depending on if it's a bus or if it's at the facility or who it is, who they need to call. But the, the main thing is, is that we are there uh, during these time, critical times to ensure that uh, the safety of all of these passengers coming and going through the city. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, are there any other questions? Ah, seeing none, do I hear a motion? Yeah, Coach Mara, I have the motion. Thank you. Uh, I move to forward the proposed amendment to December 7th, 2021 and consent agenda for approval. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to move this to the uh, December 7th consent agenda for approval. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Chief Neal. You get to go home for dinner now. I, I know. And this was a very successful night for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thank you. Um, I have one last question um, uh, for uh, John Hutton. We have a, a request from uh, Council Member Hans Steiger from Pierce County Council. Uh, John, are you on the agenda tonight? I'm not on the oh, agenda, just, but I'm on the meeting. Yeah. Well, yeah now I'm on Sorry. the agenda. We're good. Okay. Um, you know, he was asking about, I think, a, a fence between our property and the Pierce County property. Were you mm -hmm. able to look into that? Yes, Jason uh, went out and met with uh, him, and I believe him and another neighbor, and I got an immediate thank you from Mr. Zeiger. Uh, and so we're okay. working on best options to uh, to address okay. the problem and get going on it. So. Well, thank you. I'll just let him know you're that you're working on this. Yeah, well, he, he's, already, he's aware. He's already thanked me by email. So he's very aware that we're working well, good. on it. So. Yep. Good. Thank you very much, John. You're very welcome. All oh, right. Thank you. Are there is there any other uh, items uh, for the good of the order before we adjourn? Wow, this oh. is the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, the next meeting will be January the 11th. Can you believe that? Into 2022 at 5 p.m. Right. And since this will be Councilmember Bruce's last meeting, I want to say thank you very much, Greg, for your hard work on behalf of our citizens uh, on our council. You, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank if, you we were, if we were gonna... there, we. Go ahead, sir. No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you if I could say something. But I just wanted to thank you as a chair, and thank, thank you, you. Councilmember City uh, Sefa Dawson and Council President Honda for always indulging my questions, for having patience, and uh, I've enjoyed my time. Uh, but I, I really love uh, what, what this is about, and helping everyone out. And thank you for again, everyone. Chiefs, everyone that made any reports and things like that, I appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Greg. All right. It's been a pleasure working with you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Well, we'll see Greg tomorrow night. So. I'll see you yeah. tomorrow. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'd All right. Well, thank, <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, we... We are now adjourning at 5.40 p.m. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, Ms. Janicki and Ms. Heidi. Thank you. Good night. Bye now. Everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Holy shit. Look how that gets